Chart labels help to show us what the data in our chart represents. And often we find these labels in legend boxes either to the bottom or to the right of a chart. However, research tells us that displaying the legend in this way isn't the optimal way. And it actually takes the reader of that chart more brain power to process what the key messages of that chart are. So in this video, we're looking at how we can optimize our chart labels so that it's easier for our readers to understand. So if you're ready, let's get started. So let's start by answering the question of does label position matter? And let's take a look at two charts. Well, the chart on the left we can see has a legend at the bottom, and that tells us that actual is purple and forecast is gray. The chart on the right uses dynamic labels. Now this gives us the same information, that actual is purple and forecast is gray. And therefore these charts show exactly the same story. However, the chart on the right should be easier to read. And that's because we've used proximity. So we've placed the label nearer to the line. So therefore the brain automatically associates that label with the line. We've also used similarity. So our label text is the same color as the line. This also helps our brain to associate those two items together. And it's those two elements that make the chart on the right easier to read. So let's find out how we can label charts in this way in Excel. So here we are in Excel. You can see that we have our data here. It's contained inside an Excel table and has a column of date, actual forecast, actual label and forecast label. And our goal is to create a chart with dynamic labeling of each series. So let's start by creating our chart. I'll select my data column, including the header, and then I'll hold control and select the other columns. From there, I'll click insert. Then from the line charts, I'll select this first item. Okay, let's drag this up. Now there's some elements in here that we just don't need. So let's delete the chart title, the major grid lines, and also the chart legend. So at present, we have our actual line, which is blue, and our forecast line, which is orange. The actual label, and the forecast label columns don't currently have any formulas in them. So let's start by creating the label for our forecast line. I'll type equals, if, open brackets, and I'm to say that if my date is equal to the maximum from the date column, I'll close that bracket. In that scenario, I want to return the forecast value. Otherwise, I want to return nothing. Now, here's the issue. If I type zero into that cell and press return, what you'll see is that Excel creates this line equally. If I try and return an empty text string, Excel still renders that line on the chart. And that's because even though these cells look empty, they're not. They actually contain a value. So here it contains a value of a blank text string but there's a function that we can use that is not rendered on a chart, and that is the NA function. So when I type NA in there and press return, you can see that we no longer have that line. And in a few moments time, we'll add a data label to that. So what does the NA function do? Well, in short, it just creates the not applicable error. We often see this when working with lookup functions, but when used with a chart, the chart doesn't render NA as a value. So heading back to our formula here. So just to recap, this formula says that if our date is equal to the maximum date in this column, return the forecast value, otherwise return an NA error. Okay, it's now time to add our data label. So I'll select the chart, come up to format, and then in the drop down on the left, I'm going to select my forecast label. In the chart, you can see this one item has now been selected. So the one item there is this 153 in our forecast label column. From there, I'll go to chart design, add chart element, data labels, and I want a data label to the right. Okay, that's appeared. I'm now going to right click on my data label and select format data labels. In the pane on the right, 
I'll select series name and I'll deselect value. Now at the moment this says forecast data label because that is the same as our column header. So I'll right click on my chart, come down to select data, select my forecast label, click edit, and then I'll label that to be the same as my forecast column, so the value in cell C1. Click OK and OK again. Right, that label now says forecast. Let me just drag in my plot area slightly to make sure that that doesn't overlap. Perfect. OK, now let's build the formula for our actual label. So here in cell D2, I'll start by entering equals. And I want to find out what the maximum date is that has a value in the actual column. So I'll start with max ifs, open bracket. I'll select the date column, enter a comma. And I want that where the actual comma, open double quotes, does not equal, close double quotes, ampersand and then an empty cell so two double quotes i'll close that and press return so that's returned a value of 44742 which is a date serial number which will be the same as the 30th of june 2022 so now if i use an if so if open bracket the date equals the same as that then in that scenario return the actual value otherwise return the NA function again. Now close the if and press return. That's perfect, you can see that now we just have one value of 174, and if we enter in any more values, so 156, you can see that that label moves. Let me delete that. And now we just follow through with the same steps as we undertook for the forecast line. So I'll select the chart, come up to format, and select my actual label. Then from chart design, I'll add a chart element on the data label to the right. I'll select the data label, right click, and then go to format data labels. From there, I'll select the series name, but not the value. Now again, this says actual label, so I need to repoint this. I'll right click on the chart, go to select data, select actual label, click edit, and then repoint that to cell B1. Click OK and click OK to close. OK, so that's got the proximity element sorted out. Let's look at how we can apply similarity and colours to help readers of this chart. So my actual line, I'll select a new colour for that. Here I've got this purple that I've already used. I'll select that and I'll apply the same colour for the label. And I'll bold that text as well. Now, assuming that the actual is the key story, I want forecast to be in a less emphasized color. So for that, I'll select a shade of gray, and then I'll apply the same gray to my label. Okay, we're almost there. I think we just need to fix this axis at the bottom. So I right click on there, go to format axis, and then in the format axis pane, I'll expand the number section. Now from here, there's different format codes that we could implement. So for example, if I went for a month, 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 and clicked add, that will then change those so our months have three characters. You could enter two more M's in the format code section, click add, and now that just displays the single letter. Also, if we wanted to add the year element, we could add MMM-YY, and that gives us a month and a year, but we might need to expand the width of that chart slightly. I think the best one is MMM in this scenario. Add that. Now I can just expand the range of our chart slightly. And that's perfect. So now if we get any more data, we can see that our label moves as we add more data. Not only that, because this is a table, if we were to add any more data to the bottom, but actually our entire chart will update accordingly. So here we've combined the benefit of tables, the fact that they auto expand with structured references for tables to make sure that our calculations automatically update. We've then combined that with the NA function, which doesn't generate on a chart. And then we've combined that with these dynamic data labels so that we can help our charts to be easier to read. Well, that's it for this video. 
we've looked at the principles of proximity and similarity to discover how we can improve our chart labeling. And we've done this all inside an Excel table, so everything is completely dynamic. As we get new data, everything should update accordingly. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and like. And if you like what we teach and think that it'd be great to automate Excel in more ways, then why not head over to our training program at excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.